All right, Fran, BYU's wanted to play on a big stage like this for a long time, and now they're at the Big 12 tournament. How would you kind of describe what this tournament is like to BYU fans who have never really watched it like this? Well, there's the argument about Big East, Madison Square Garden. I was part of that for a number of times, and that's pretty uh, special. But Kansas City is uh, its really like a mini Final Four. It really is. When you come down to the Power and Light District, you'll see it, Jeremy, this next couple of days. Um, the fan bases are phenomenal. The, the games, by and large, are sellouts. Um, obviously, the competition of what is the best league in the country speaks for itself. And uh, Kansas City is a great location. It really is. I think, and obviously, it's going to be here till 31. And the reason it's going to be here till 31 is it just, just has great support. There's a great vibe. It's a basketball town for a week. And uh, BYU fans are going to see it. And they love basketball, so they're going to fit right in. BYU fans feel like they know the guy that runs the town, Andy Reid, too, yeah, which is yeah, a kook, yeah. so it's kind of a fun vibe that way. Exactly. Um, in terms of, of this tournament specifically, it's interesting because Houston comes in as the one. They're the number one team in the country. Kansas, McCuller, not going to play. Dickinson, not going to play. But Kansas shows up at this. Iowa State excited. Yeah. What's your vibe of kind of who's the favorite here and what could go down? You know, I was looking at the uh, the bracket, and I was thinking of all the second-round games today, and I'm like, this, these would be quarterfinal games in a given year. And then quarterfinal games tomorrow are going to be incredible. Um, you know, when I look at BYU, TCU, you know, um, Texas, Oklahoma's had a heartbreak this year, and they're pretty good. You know, you can go right down the list and the way UCF played yesterday in Cincinnati with a chance now with a wounded Kansas to advance. Um, I can't wait till Saturday because I'm going to get the chance to do most of these games, but um, it's going to be what we've seen in the league. We know Houston's had a phenomenal year, um, but yet when you look at 1-14, to 14, it's as balanced as the league's ever been. What's the value of kind of these games relative to the seed line for the NCAA tournament, specifically for BYU? Yeah. Lenardi has BYU as a five. Do you think they could get to a four if they win, say, two games in this tournament? I think there's a, you know, from what I understand, and I talked to, I texted with Joe last night about the variables. Um, you know, after the first two lines, the ones and twos are almost, you know, set with, uh, you know, with Iowa State and, and uh, you know, uh, Arizona and Tennessee and Houston, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of movement, I think, three, four, and five seed lines. So, absolutely, I think BYU could make a little bit of noise in this tournament and move up. But if, you, if I'd have told you back in uh, October that, hey, don't worry, everything's good, BYU's <laughs> going to be a, be a five seed, you go, I'll take it right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love the way they play. Obviously, uh, I'm excited to see uh, the Cougs in here. Um, because of what they've accomplished this year. And um, I'm just I'm excited because they, they play a brand of basketball that I like. You're the analyst tonight. You get to kind of chill these first couple yeah, games and observe, yeah. which is fun. BYU third matchup with UCF, two yeah. really tough games. Yes. Um, what do you think of this matchup round three? And it is hard to beat a team three times. BYU's done it just 16 times in the last 25 years. It's, it's uh, well, the, first of all, you know how good UCF is because you play two really tough games with them. The second game in Provo was crazy. The first one was a great road win. It might have been the first road win of the season for, for the Cougs in the league. And so, uh, and then we watched them yesterday. I did the game, and they're very athletic, very good defensively. Um, the key, I think, for the Cougs is uh, that they probably score a little better than uh, UCF. So making threes, as you know, I don't have to tell you, making threes is a good formula. And uh, certainly that's probably a key today. But I would expect a dogfight and uh, a really good test for, for BYU. Last time BYU played in this gym, Tyler Haas made a late shot to beat Texas. Yeah. You're always hoping they summon that kind of energy from, from the Cougs today, I assume, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I, I just think the coolest – listen, the, I know the history of Coug Cougar basketball, you know, because um, I'm a junkie. I mean, and to, it was Tyler Hawes. It's been Jimmer somewhere else. It's been Devin Durant. Um, to see these guys make their own history today and now going forward in the Big 12, I'm really excited about. And we've already worked with our uh, people back in Bristol. We will be in Provo next year, I promise you. I have to, I have to get to Provo. I can't wait. You have to. Absolutely. Yeah, can't wait. Go. Yeah. Thanks for the time, friend. Always a pleasure.